little bit of roll out and a lip out as well. So straight away we're learning to adapt, learning to be a little bit more based on our feel rather than being so specific in our technique. Welcome to a brand new video. Do you get stuck about what clubs to use around the green? Today I'm going to talk about three clubs that we can use, three windows of opportunity and how we can create good club selection but basically chip it close every single time. Welcome to today's video, let's get straight into the first club that we're going to use and how we use it. So start chipping it close. So the first club we're going to talk about is the 8 iron. And we're going to think about this in what shot we're going to use and what window and flight we're going to predict. Because if we can predict the window and the flight, then we can start to pick the right club, the right shot, hit it, chip it closer every single time. So what is the first shot? Okay, so this is the first shot we're going to talk about from this situation where we've got a lot of green between us and the far flag. So a lot of rollout opportunity. So I want you to think about an eight iron as a shot that has a lot of rollout on it and gets the ball rolling like a putt. Now, I want you to bear in mind the window of opportunity. So our eight iron window on our launch is going to roughly be around a square window around this height because that's going to allow the ball to roll out towards the flag. So if we picture that, okay, if our ball goes at this height, how much speed does it need to carry onto the fringe to roll it out? And I think just picturing it like this, so window number one, this is how high it needs to go to land on the green and roll out towards the flag. And this is a shot that I would use as my safety shot. I need to get really, really good at this shot to be good at the rest of them because this is where the club is traveling at a slow speed or relatively slow speed. And our strike has to be inch perfect to get the ball rolling out towards the flag. I count this shot as our bread and butter shot. This is a shot that we need to get really good at. The long chip and run from the front of the green to the back of the green there's no need to land it all the way so as I'm picturing what shot as I'm stood over the golf ball I'm imagining that ball goes at roughly around a height and a window around here this will all become relevant as we go through to the next club and the final club okay let's chip this one away so the shot that rolls out window around here picture that shot make that shot happen Okay, a little bit short, but I started it through the window. It's left me about four foot apart. Again, easy shot that I need to get good at. So that's the first shot you need as part of your short game. So the first window is our lowest window. Let's move on to the next shot. Shot number two, pitching wedge. So you're going to see a common theme here of how we start to move this window up with the loft that we use to reduce the rollout the ball has on the green. So first off, we had a ball that had a lot of rollout. Now I want to imagine the second shot is 50% in the air and 50% rollout. Now we're going to talk about a scenario here where it's perfect to use this style of shot. So if we look what we've got in front of us here, we've got a little bit of a mound to go over, a little bit of a McKenzie drop down. So I want to feel like I want to land it over that or just short of it and let it roll down. So if I was landing the golf ball just short of this, I'd be looking to land it around here, take the slope, wrap the flag. So we firstly talked about the first window of opportunity we had, which was our lowest one around this height. Now I want you to imagine we've moved that up a yard, so our window of opportunity is now around here. So we're starting to hit the ball a little bit higher, we're starting to reduce the rollout, and if we can start to imagine where that ball is, it really helps us picture a shot, play a shot, and actually helps us become a little bit more imaginative and react to the target. Rather than being so bothered about technique, we we get more lost into actually playing the shot. And if we can get it that way, then for me, we actually allow us to actually relax, play a better shot, and not be so technically minded. So now time to play this shot. We're picturing a window which is around this height to allow me to land the ball halfway and roll out the second half. So have a few practice swings, picturing that window of launch, getting the ball to roll out, adapt to those feelings, into the shot, keep the feelings fresh in the head, play it out.
just like that. And if we can get more reactive to imagination, windows opportunity, we allow ourselves to play some simple shots. Now, let's get on to the final golf club. So finally, we're on to the 54 degree wedge. We're going to talk about now where we would use it and now our window opportunity and if you've guessed by now we've started to see that window has gone from low to a little bit higher to a little bit higher again. So straight away we're learning to adapt, learning to be a little bit more based on our feel rather than being so specific in our technique. Let's show you the scenario or one of the scenarios in which I would use this club and how I would picture the window of opportunity. Okay so we've got our golf ball here, we've got very little green between us and the fringe to this first flag. So this is our favourite shot. This is the shot we want to hit super high. Well, I say super high, relatively high. So with this golf club now and this shot in this scenario, I would picture that this golf ball would fly 75% in the air and 25% rollout. So if we go back to the first scenario, we had the A time which had a low window opportunity, which had more rollout. So we categorised that at 25% in the air, 75% rollout. We then went to pitching wedge, which was 50-50. And now we're onto a shot where we've got 75% in the air, 25% rollout. So if we need a shot now and a window of opportunity, and where would that be? That would roughly be around here, I would picture, to allow that golf ball to land on the green. So if you stood at this shot from the side on perspective, and you imagine to get that ball landing close to that flag, or just on the green and rolling out to that flag, we need that ball to start on a trajectory around here, fly and land in. So if we added another layer to this video and the fact that we're talking about where we want the ball to land and how we want it to react and we stood it to, to it from the side, that would really get us into a good area to okay, really allow our imagination, really allow our shot selection to take place. Rather than being automatic, picking a club, playing a shot, being bothered or not being bothered, now we're straight into it, picturing it and allowing our senses to take over. Okay. So I'm imagining now my window opportunity has gone from here to here to allow that ball to land and roll out less. Okay, let's hit the shot. So if I need to do that, I need more loft in my hands, which I've got. I could potentially open the face and then I could put a little bit more speed in. Can I get the ball higher? Okay, here we go. Landed it on. A little bit of roll out. and the lip out as well. Okay, so there you go. You have my three golf clubs, my three windows opportunity. Start using that technique out on the golf course. It's gonna help you with shot selection, execution of the shot, and stop being so technical over the golf ball.